Welcome to a late night update, a very impromptu one. I'm your late night host, Dean Ryan. Tonight, I have some rather uh, important intel to share with many of our viewers who are littered throughout the EU, particularly the UK. Very important for all of those who reside still in the EU. However, it's important to those of us who are outside of the EU, mainly here in North America, as this will be affecting us. It's all connected. And I just got off a very important phone call with one of our whistleblowers, Mr. Forsetti. He goes by that. Uh, you're very well aware of him. As, uh, he shared some things with me that are a continuation and updates of the whereabouts of Prince Charles, King Charles, just exactly what that was all about, as well as some new details that are emerging in the upcoming, or I should say the attempted push for World War III, specifically onto Iran, the West and Iran. So we're going to be getting into that here tonight. I want to just first start with uh, what we shared with you regarding King Charles. Just weeks ago, we shared with you the true nature and whereabouts of King Charles. We told you what uh, was taking place and we told you what it was going to be presented as. And if you don't recall, well, we shared with you that he was being interrogated by the powers that be, Charles, for his involvement on Epstein Island. That's right. In one of those big names that has yet to be glorified over there in the mass media melees that seem to be happening. But in this particular case, what transpired from this questioning of Charles was what we heard, an attempted suicide, an attempted suicide. Whether he succeeded in doing so, we shared with you that the media, the Western media was going to be pushing this narrative of cancer, some sort of cancer, very weary. Very, very telling, very transparent how this media, which is nothing but a public relations firm for the powers that be, for the power structure, how they're presenting it, not to mention the disappearance of Kate Middleton, roughly at the same time, if not identical, in mirroring the time, the time frame of the disappearance of Charles. Impeccable. If I uh, don't recall, here's uh, that moment that we... Uh, shared with you so you can recall the confusion and the noise that follows with it. Here it is. So this comes from uh, the same friend that gave us the information about what ha was happening with uh, the late Prince Philip that you also broke in, broke from your deal media. So the exact details are a bit fuzzy, but from what I've been told is that after Charles had an interview about evidence from the Epstein Island, Epstein files and the flight logs about himself and his brother, he attempted suicide in his private quarters and was found by one of his concubines because him and his wife have separate rooms because they're not really together, they just are for public reasons. And he was whisked away to hospital and currently he's under 24 hour surveillance by a mental health team and his personal rescue. And they used the whole prostate cancer thing in the media as a cover story. And the email I sent Dean predates the news media by at least a day. Giving me this information because I sent it as soon as I got it. Yeah. And so this is already coming out into some of the uh, tabloids, I would imagine. What do we know about Kate Middleton, too? Because it, it is kind of odd. And as well as stateside, uh, some people within government and higher ups with influence seem to be having uh, health issues and are missing for some reason. Does that same thing apply to Kate Middleton? For the utopic pregnancy, I believe that's the word, utopic pregnancy, when the fetus starts growing, with, well, the baby starts growing inside the ovaries, not the womb. So she had to have surgery for that. So there's a little refresher course of the uh, information we shared with you as it happened before all the other Western publications began to do their spin on it, we shared with you, just like we did in 2020, telling you that Richie Sunak, very unknown kind of character back then, was going to be the next prime minister after Boris Johnson. 
a lot of people uh, hard to believe, but uh, the results speak for themselves. This has a lot of ramifications just to start. And here's what I'm talking about. You're going to hear about uh, Charles is going to be set to retire from public life because of this illness, but they'll blame it on cancer. There's now something called a rebel alliance. Let me explain what this is. You may recall just in stateside alone in 2020, uh, you saw something called the West PAC, which was a formulation, I should say, which was an alliance between California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, and I believe Colorado to be the West PAC where they said that they were going to rely on their science, their doctors, rather than the Trump administration's uh, recommendations regarding everything COVID-1984. So that was an alliance. Now, you might have heard about a wild alliance around that same time regarding Russia, China, and the United States, but in particular, the Trump uh, team with Putin and Xi Jinping. It's one of those far out uh, alliances people have uh, yet to really digest or dissect for that fact. Well, now I wanna share with you something that comes straight from the inside. Now the Rebel Alliance is uh, consisting of a few big players. We know this uh, exists. We know that the Republicans, Democrats, GOP, this and that, all these big conglomerate names are just that. There's always confines of structures within alliances, if it, to use that phrase, within, within. But this particular one, Rebel Alliance, is consisting of the following people. Boris Johnson, Liz Trust. They've had an alliance now, still do, I believe, with Donald Trump campaign donations through Shell Corporation to overthrow Richie Sunak. Interesting. Uh, here's some uh, people to watch. Watch Jacob Reese Mog. He's going to be triggering the Richie Sunak ousting. Interesting. See, you know, we shared with you back in 2020 that Boris Johnson may have started with the good intentions in trying to even the playing field in the UK between the North and the South. He wanted commerce to be spread throughout the country when he took over the helm as prime minister. Uh, he had intentions of ridding the Huawei 5G before something or someone put a clamp down on him, which is exactly what happened when you take note of this girlfriend of his that was throughout throughout his cabinet at that time. So something happened. Anyways, happened. Something did happen during the Boris Johnson prime minister era, uh, whether it was co-opted chemically through blackmail, through force, fraud, or just a cohesive persuasion, if you want to be polite about it, something indeed did go awry as these things usually uh, kind of revealing. But yes, yeah, so that the rebel lines, just to uh, read it right, the rebel alliance now, just to reiterate uh, of what this uh, consists of, is a Boris Johnson, Liz Trust, shadowy alliance with uh, Donald Trump, as they have now begun to do campaign donations through a shell corporation to overthrow Richie Sunak, who's no friend of uh, mine, yours, or many uh, other people for that fact. We know his uh, weird alliance with Justin Trudeau, out of all people. Makes no sense. Anyways, moving on here. And again, watch Jacob Reese Mogg, who's going to be the ignition button to start the ousting of Richie Sunak. Richie Sunak. Now, here's another one here uh, that we want to share with you is the EU is under a lot of great peril, and many of the farmers, uh, whether it is in France or throughout the greater portion of Europe, are protesting uh, like never before the austerity measures that have been handed to their so-called leaders top to bottom from the world economic forum to curb global global situations within the weather to put it kindly eu farmer protest is going to cause a major throttle into the acceleration and the nosedive of it of the eu the collapse of the eu 
So when we're looking at French farmers who are throwing manure at uh, authority figures who are cursing the day, they allow these people to come in power through socialism, through a different archetype of the Fourth Reich, are now going to be the ones who trigger the, uh, the final nail in the coffin of the EU. Something we've been predicting here at uh, Late Night Update for quite some time, whether it was going to be at the helm of Hungary doing it, followed by Italy, followed by Poland. But who would have thought? Who would have thought it's going to be the common man, the hard worker out there, the farmers, who are trying to prevent the food demics. Meanwhile, they have all these uh, upper echelon people that wanted to, the farmers to do a culling of their cattle. Unbelievable. Continuing. Now, Germany, I can tell you, is uh, this, the word we're getting from the inside is the following. Germany is getting ready to announce default on its national debt, triggering a eurozone crisis like never before. Also, EU, the uh, EU collapsing due to the farmers. You add that and those two together, you have worldwide calamity within the realms of the EU who are accelerating their best efforts to create EU army which they want to use to combat and finish the job over there in Ukraine and far beyond that into Russia and pretty much the, the access of evil of just the 21st century. Yes, this is what it is. EU is the protege, if you will, the continuation of that very third Reich that we thought disappeared uh, somewhere in the midst of the Bermuda Triangle or all the ways in the very confusing high altitude mountains of Argentina at behest of the Vatican. Well, guess again, they're right under the nose of each and every European citizen to date, to date. Now we've reached into the realms of uh, Putin, who is making a huge stride uh, as we speak with his groundbreaking, I should say universal groundbreaking interview with Tucker Carlson. But yes, speaking of Putin and uh, just the power of that, let me share this with you. Uh, I can now announce that Putin has proposed NATO and EU peace deal in exchange for the Ukraine and being an independent state under the Russian Federation. This is huge. NATO refused per usual, and NATO's on their just last legs to their due for a graveyard visit as soon as possible. That very old establishment people forgot about, yes, they refused the peace treaty in exchange for an independent Ukraine. But the EU needs to accept to avoid economic collapse. They don't have a choice. The EU is on their hind legs. Big deal. EU is on their hind legs. They're even trying to make a deal right now uh, with China. And in the event that China and Russia, as we shared with you, if China and Russia have a big alliance in the military arts, the West is trying to make a deal to give over Finland, have them attack, then that would escalate and signify the end of NATO. Just let that sink in for a minute. Anyways, speaking of China, let me share this with you. China is now in great panic. China is now in great panic as about 60% trade tariffs and wants non-aggression packet in the South China Sea. This is coming to them, stemming th uh, to them as a proposal now, as they dwindle into the nosedive spiral into oblivion EU, yeah, this was the proposal by the EU to China. That's a big deal. 60% trade tariffs. It wants a non-aggression packet in the South China Sea because something, someone is in Taiwan. That's the next big conflict of a war like Israel. Israel was set up to be the conflict, the spark, the ignition button that sets up the world, sparks the world into a World War III. That was a lot of the reasoning and purpose of the creation of Israel. If you look back into the geopolitical realm of it, the history and uh, all the other spirituality uh, involvement aside, that's, I've always known that for almost 20 years now. Continuing. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm, I've been meaning to tackle this for quite some time, but now is the time to do it. And that is all the discussion of the so-called disease X. Just in the nick of time before this incredible election season, election year, well, so is the announcement and discovery of the disease X. A very timely disease, a very timely pandemic, but don't call it that. 
is now underway, which always starts in Europe and makes its way over across the Atlantic to the very, very far west, uh, western states, to the United States. Let me tell you a bit more about it. Just in time for 2024's election season, and the World Economic Forum has announced, along with the WHO, of the Disease X. It was all the talk at Davos, Switzerland, just weeks ago, where leaders were discussing what to do about the Disease X. This wasn't about what happened on social media platforms as disinformation, misinformation is the greatest threat. In the same realm, in the same breath, well, so is Disease X, as it was discussed by just the who's who, no pun intended, over there at the World Health Organization's blueprint list since 2018. It has always been known as the unknown disease. Well, amazingly, and just by coincidence, the blueprint list includes the Crimean, Congo, hemorrhagic fever, Ebola, Lassa fever, Zika, and of course, what we now know as COVID-1984. All these little nuances that were mentioned in that 2018 blueprint for success, but really they called it uh, for, in front of the public, the blueprint of just unknown diseases that could become a problem in the future. Well, the very flamboyant Tedros, the director general of World Health Organization, who emphasized that the WF, the need for countries around the world to sign onto the WHO's pandemic treaty by this coming May. Such a treaty would help countries better pool, they say, resources corporate to research and development, new strategies and technology in order to prevent and prepare for the next big infectious threat. They may turn into another pandemic. God forbid the corona pollution has yet to cease to end, yet remains very prevalent in the minds of the power structure who wants to unlock a lockdown 2.0. Our guesstimation here is uh, right around the November elections here in the United States. Now it's worth noting that the so-called disease X is said to be probably one of the most deadliest unknown diseases that the WHO has ever unleashed, or let's say told us about rather, that we've ever witnessed or experienced. It's said it to kill ever so slightly amongst very minuscule contact. Uh, many experts who are familiar with the matter and the disease have said it's going to make the so-called virus from the bat who loved us look like child's play. And how the uh, lamestream urine soak media is presenting it, well, well, they're saying that disease X will arrive at some point. They just don't know where, when, who, how. And likely, they say, in the near future, perhaps within a decade or by the end of summer. But what do we know, according to Forbes, for instance? Not properly addressing the climate change could hasten the jumping of a new pathogen from other animals to humans. Wow. The big question is, will the world be prepared? Do they know? Will it just be jumping just over little turtles and then and just collecting points like a little video game? I mean, this is the child's play, if you ask me. And it's the fear-based trauma that they're basing their little strategies on. Well, it's not 2020 anymore, but let me tell you about the following now, because in preparation for this uh, introduction of a very, very deadly disease, you have places like London, and this is the intel we have here, who have now experienced a chemical attack over there in London just a week ago. And the word is, this is some kind of module of pr preparation, some psychological warfare and predictive programming for people to prepare to stay inside because it's so dangerous now to stay inside as all these wild and just migrants, very violent and attacks with chemicals begin to accelerate and spur on the fear like never before on top of disease acts. Do we see this? So we have misinformation, disinformation as the number one uh, Pulitzer Prize award of just the boogeyman to be uh, fearful of. Uh, forget uh, climate change, that, that, that is sidelined. Next, you have disease X, which was part of the blueprints of diseases, the unknowns, that is going to just slaughter everybody. And number three, now you have the uptick in violence from migrants in the lawlessness of the big cities by design, which will then spur on the fear to stay in, don't vote, on top of, well, 
we can't exchange, you know, currency anymore. We have to go digital now because of the disease X. We might get a chemical attack. And even more so, let me explain this now. I'm going to give you a list of cities that you're going to see a, let's just say a drill gun live for when this disease X hits and it hits hard. If you recall 2020, all the just pictures, the video of, you know, people in China that we all know right now was very contrived, very contrived. Let me give you a list of cities now. The lockdowns being tried, you can hear about patient zeros or a orphanage or a senior citizen home. Uh, everybody is struck in with the disease X in this uh, so-called city. And that's where they run with it and then bring it over to the United States, which is what they want. So here is a list of cities. You can expect to see disease X showing its ugly fangs at behest of the WHO which will then begin the lockdown 2.0. They need to regain and retain power as the EU crumbles into the dustbin where it belongs. But here it is. London, Birmingham, Sheffield, Hull, Newcastle, Tyne, Liverpool, Leeds, Langolan, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Northern Ireland, Stockholm, Paris, Helsinki, Frankfurt, just to name a few. That's where you can see the introduction of this disease X fully take its grip and control over your rights, your sovereignty as an individual, as a countryman, and as a citizen. So to kind of just recap it all and put it all into layman's terms, uh, we're sitting on the precipice of major change. And I'm not talking I'm not talking many, many months from now. We're talking hours to days to weeks, anytime, every time. And that's how this Great Reset, which is meeting opposition on a great level, seems to be playing out here. We know that the desperation is the deep same way, and it's happening. And some of the players you think are the nefarious type are playing a role. But then again, how politics truly works even on the world stage, it's not necessarily always what you stand for. It's who controls your blackmail. That's how the game works. So anyways, we're going to be monitoring this uh, situation as it develops all these different stories from disease X to the monarchy or the last days of it, especially the last days of the EU and NATO. As Russia seems to be regaining their momentum in winning the PR struggle and war. And that's a big factor in this entire pandemic war. So I will continue to monitor it here at uh, this late night update, Real Deal Media's finest. And we do appreciate your time, all your tidbits, as we continue to get to the bottom of it and find the truth. Because in a world filled with universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. For all of us here at uh, Real Deal Media's late night update, I'm Dean Ryan saying thank you for sharing this quick late night with me. Until next time, always remember to stay tuned and stay awake. And I'll keep my eye on the prize and my ear to the ground as we destroy the people who are trying to kill us and take back what's rightfully ours.